Set faith at work on Christ for the killing of your sin. His blood is the great sovereign remedy for sin-sick souls. Live in this, and you will die a conqueror. Yea, you will, for the good providence of God, live to see your lust dead at your feet. Question. But you will say, quote, How shall faith act itself on Christ for this end and purpose? Unquote. Answer. I say, sundry ways. By faith fill your soul with the due consideration of that provision which is laid up in Jesus Christ for this end and purpose, that all your lusts, this very lust wherewith you are entangled, may be mortified. By faith ponder on this, that though you are no way able in or by yourself to get the conquest over your distemper, though you are even weary of contending, and are utterly ready to faint, yet that there is enough in Jesus Christ to yield you relief. See Philippians 4.13 It stayed the prodigal, when he was ready to faint, that yet there was bread enough in his father's house, though he was at a distance from it, yet it relieved him, and stayed him, that there it was. In your greatest distress and anguish, consider that fullness of grace, those riches, those treasures of strength, might, and help, that are laid up in him for our support. Let them come into and abide in your mind. Consider that he is, quote, exalted and made a prince and a savior to give repentance unto Israel, unquote. And if to give repentance, to give mortification, without which the other is not, nor can be. Christ tells us that we obtain purging grace by abiding in him. To act faith upon the fullness that is in Christ for our supply is an eminent way of abiding in Christ. For both our incision and abode is by faith. Let, then, your soul by faith be exercised with such thoughts and apprehensions as these. I am a poor, weak creature unstable as water. I cannot excel. This corruption is too hard for me, and is at the very door of ruining my soul. And what to do, I know not. My soul is become as parched ground, and an habitation of dragons. I have made promises and broken them. Vows and engagements have been as a thing of naught. Many persuasions have I had, that I had got the victory and should be delivered. But I am deceived, so that I plainly see that without some eminent succor and assistance, I am lost and shall be prevailed on to an utter relinquishment of God. But yet, though this be my state and condition, let the hands that hang down be lifted up and the feeble knees be strengthened. Behold, the Lord Christ, that has all fullness of grace in his heart, all fullness of power in his hand, he is able to slay all these his enemies. There is sufficient provision in him for my relief and assistance. He can take my drooping, dying soul and make me more than a conqueror. Quote, Why do you say, O my soul, my way is hid from the Lord and my judgment is passed over from my God? Have you not known, have you not heard, that the everlasting God, the Lord, the creator of the ends of the earth, faints not, neither is weary? There is no searching of his understanding. He gives power to the faint, and to them that have no might he increases strength. Even the youths shall faint and be weary, and the young men shall utterly fall. But they that wait upon the Lord shall renew their strength. They shall mount up with wings as eagles. They shall run and not be weary. They shall walk and not faint." Unquote. He can make the dry parched ground of my soul to become a pool, and my thirsty barren heart as springs of water. Yea, he can make this habitation of dragons this heart so full of abominable lusts and fiery temptations to be a place for grass and fruit to himself. So God stayed Paul under his temptation 
with the consideration of the sufficiency of his grace. Quote, my grace is sufficient for you, unquote. 2 Corinthians 12, 9. Though he were not immediately so far made partaker of it as to be freed from his temptation, yet the sufficiency of it in God, for that end and purpose, was enough to stay his spirit. I say, then, by faith, be much in the consideration of that supply and the fullness of it that is in Jesus Christ, and how he can at any time give you strength and deliverance. Now, if hereby you do not find success to a conquest, yet you will be stayed in the chariot, that you shall not fly out of the field until the battle be ended. You will be kept from an utter despondency and a lying down under your unbelief, or a turning aside to false means and remedies, that in the issue will not relieve you. The efficacy of this consideration will be found only in the practice. Raise up your heart by faith to an expectation of relief from Christ. Relief in this case from Christ is like the prophet's vision. Quote, it is for an appointed time, but at the end it shall speak and not lie. Though it tarry, yet wait for it, because it will surely come, it will not tarry. Though it may seem somewhat long to you, while you are under your trouble and perplexity, yet it shall surely come in the appointed time of the Lord Jesus, which is the best season. If, then, you can raise up your heart to a settled expectation of relief from Jesus Christ, if your eyes are toward him, as the eyes of a servant to the hand of the master, Psalm 123.2, when he expects to receive somewhat from him, your soul shall be satisfied, he will assuredly deliver you, he will slay the lust, and your latter end shall be peace. Only look for it at his hand. Expect when and how he will do it. Quote, if you will not believe, surely you shall not be established. Unquote. Isaiah 7, 9. 